two, and we are. Oh. Now we're live, baby. Hey, 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 we live, huh? We mm. live. Mm. Mm. So, Collins, mm. Mm. how you feeling? <laughs> he's he's dialed. <laughs> All right, he's, why, he's killing it. <laughs> why, you know that why are you asking the, uh, the guy off screen? Right. To, uh, uh, how, you doing, how you doing, Tom? <laughs> I'm good, it's guys. Been forever, I'm good. Man. Yeah, it sure has, dude. But uh, now nah, I'm excited. Uh, we were trying to figure out how long it has oh. been. I gotta, <laughs> this is kind of. I gotta, I gotta look over there these go. guys now. But uh, we're we're all here, man. It's, uh, it's the family. It's a family reunion for sure. So. I came. I'm actually very excited. So much. How about you, D? How you doing? I'm chilling, man. It's been great. I've been great. Glad to see you fellas, though, man. This feels feels like home. Yeah. It Good does. To be back. Let our hair down a little bit. Talk our shit. Tom, you've it, this has been growing phenomenally from what I can tell, and it's well, been you. awesome seeing. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. You know, it's it's been it's been good. We had uh, we've had some good people. Yeah, introduced a new set. Um, and then I'll probably maybe off camera tell you there's been some in the last like 48 hours some ups and downs as to like a potential opportunity to move to another studio that I think we're gonna pass on for now just because I want to keep keep you know keep on the path I'm on man. Okay. But speaking okay. of the path we're on, dude. Okay. Um, I've been seeing you pop off. I mean, you are obviously popping off too, but nothing <laughs> as new. But I feel like the public speaking stuff Fuck I haven't yeah. seen any of that. So I want to I want to talk yeah, about that. Yeah, didn't I? I? I first of all I tried to tell you on things. I tried to tell you. <laughs> I tried to tell you. Um. No, it's it. Go ahead, boy. First of all, I've always known I was going. I felt like I needed to be on a stage. I always knew that to some degree. In eighth grade, I did a um, a uh, like a, a talent show thing mm -hmm. with uh, this dude named Kenny Hobbs and Noel. Shout out, um, may Noel rest in peace. But he, uh, but I remember doing it and feeling kind of like. I felt a little jitters and I did it, but then I never kind of went back for whatever reason. Like me, life happened and, and then the anxiety crept up, mm. but I always knew it. I always, I'm like, man, I want to be on the stage. Right. Uh, and then every time I told, I've told you this, I would go on the concerts, I would go to Drake. And instead of really being enamored with the performance, I was more enamored with the fact that there was a performance. Not necessarily the person. Like, I'm in like, I'm looking at the crowd and I'm looking at the light show and as opposed to the, 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 the artist, right? You're not, you're not caught up in the fandom. You're more so in the production of yeah. what's going on. Even yeah. even the other day, which we'll get into, I was like looking at the production of the whole situation. Yeah. So I always knew that. And then me and you sat down. <laughs> yeah. And I think <laughs> we might have been at Rob's at the time, where wherever we were. Yeah. We were both like, man, you should just go all in with speaking. Yeah. We were you at my crib, that? I think. We were at my crib, yep. And I just remember saying, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. And, and remember, I was going to try to be a stand-up comic. Which is, again, being a speaker. Yeah. But there was fear in that. But then I didn't really, being the funny thing, I like being silly, but I don't know if I, if I genuinely love writing jokes. Right? I like just being a silly human being in general. So anyways, uh, we went all in on that, and I just started putting myself in situations that I could do it. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and here's the thing, D, Tom. It comes, it comes in very natural. I believe it. Yeah. I, I mean, you're a talkative guy. You want to say some shit. <laughs> All you needed was a stage to have your stage presence met. Mm. A lot of people have. <laughs> Dropping bars early. I know. <laughs> right. We get to it. Damn. No, but you know, there's so many people that are that are meant for a stage. It's just that there are different stages in this world. I was I, one of the people I admire who I've always admired my whole life is Snoop. Mm. And I just look at him now as a veteran stage performer. And it's like, it don't matter if it's at a, a damn circus. Like, he's on his stage, on a platform, so he's used to this vantage point. And I think people like you, you are comfortable with that vantage point of being on a platform and then speaking to a crowd. It's the same thing as an orator over a fire telling a once upon a time, right. it was a dark and yeah. stormy night. Just your own version of it, bro. And you've been, like, developing that muscle over the past couple of months, and we got to the schools, we get to mm. events, like, bravo. But, but it's weird because there's... It's, I've always knew I was supposed to be on a stage, but then I was like terrified of being on a stage. It's kind of weird. I was but terrified. It's funny you mentioned that your anxiety kind of kicked in during a time in your life where your stage presence was, you saw it, but it wasn't continued maybe because of it. Right. Yeah, I, it crept and, in. And then I would say that the going on social media was a start to just be used to being seen. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, I agree. So, I but, agree. but digitally is very different from Physically. in person. Right. So like, you know, I've been viewed a bunch of times now, but I haven't necessarily been viewed a bunch of times face to face. And that energy is different. I, talking to a hundred people 
is a lot more energy intense than 10 million views. Mm -hmm. And I know this for a fact. So it's like, but, that, but like you said, I had to address that muscle or kind of exercise that muscle. And, the, and here's the thing we didn't realize this. And I think you and I figured this out. I went to school for mass communication. Yeah, you didn't even remember that. that. It yeah. was like I was always supposed to communicate. But I love that type of shit, Chris, because it, it tells your story without you even having to really try too hard. It's like, no, I was always this person who wanted to be a mass communicator. Mm -hmm. didn't even realize <laughs> literally in the title. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you just, you just, I, I always tell you, bro, all of this shit that you've done is created it separately, but it's all meant for one pot. It's all telling your exact story. So when you talk to these people, yes, mass communications is what I'm about. You know what I mean? It's what I've been about. So, nah, man, you're on the right path. And, and and then, so, because I'm just a curious mind, and and then now, and because of social media, I think social media is such a good tool if you look at it, right? If you change the way you look at things, the, the things, things you look, look at, at change. change. A lot of people will look at social media and say it's a big shit show and it sucks and da 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 but that's just not the way I view it. Are there aspects that suck? Yes. But there's a lot of aspects of it that I've learned a lot, and it's put me in a lot of different directions of people, of different people who've taught me different things. So even my social media feeds, don't get me wrong, I'd be bullshitting on there too, but a lot of the bullshit, and sometimes it's still me getting some type of knowledge. Like, for instance, there's just Dude named um, Vin. He's a he's a he's a speaker and master communicator, and I've learned so much through him. Not necessarily that I, did, I wasn't doing it, but I now know why I was doing it. So, for instance, when you're communicating to someone, the silence is is one of the biggest tools that most people are afraid to use, and it's one of the most powerful things you can use in communicating. Right, and most people feel like they need to fill the space. Especially if you want to talk about even in relationships, like if a guy and a girl at a bar and they're having a, 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 a conversation, nine times out of 10, the guy feels like he can't make it be silent. He has to fill that space or else the girl won't think that I'm worthy of a conversation, you know, mm -hmm. and the weird paradox of, and, and I've learned this is if you're okay in that silence, that actually improves that person's energy towards you because now they almost have to feel it's like it's, it's almost, an anticipatory it's a yeah and it's an anticipatory and it's it's a confidence thing right so like now when i'm when i so if i got the mic in my hand i'm on stage the old me and a lot of people would be so worried about if if i'm not up here giving value every single second <laughs> of the of the whatever Speech. time frame then you suck mm -hmm. and that's just not the truth there's a few reasons why you want to pause one you want to pause after you say something to give people time to process what you just said. I just did it there. Whereas if I'm talking like this and you, I need to give you time to process what we're talking about so that we can talk about the next topic, I'm not even giving you a time to think about Right, I'm trying to catch up with what the next right. word was, right? Right, so then you slow down and, and then it gives you time to gather your thoughts. <laughs> it's like a secret weapon. If you're just trying to fill the space and, and, and you're not willing to pause, you can get stumbled over your words very easy. Pause. Yeah, pause. <laughs> hey, yo. So, and so that's like another thing that I've learned from social media. Uh, and another thing is this thing called uh, vocal variation. Being able to move your voice up, down, faster, slower, in order to create almost like this artwork, which, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Speaking, man. So sometimes, so if I can do something like this and we can get really, really powerful. Mm-hmm. And then you can lower your voice, you slow it down, and all of a sudden what you just said was more powerful. But then if you speed it up and you talk a little bit higher, then all of a sudden it could be a little bit more light. So you use these pauses in certain points of what you're saying to really wow, you know yeah, what I'm saying, yeah. to really get their ass. Grabbing storytelling attention. And I realized, I'm like, oh, sh I kind of do that just in natural conversation. And yeah. I didn't realize that this was a, a thing that you can like learn to do. And now I'm a little bit more cautious of it. But when I look back, I'm like, I've always spoke like this. You know what it is? It's people that are studying people do people shit. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's really, I like that. All you got to do is just kind of, I think what your process is right now, you're recognizing. Social media is helping you recognize these natural processes that you've already been a part of. And now you're able to put those into a physical formatted stage mm -hmm. and then use that. Because honestly, Chris, you talk with conviction. Mm. So that's the reason the tonalities are going to change, shift, slow mm -hmm. down, speed up, because it's convicted talk. You know what I mean? When you're speaking like a natural person and you mean it, right, right. that's exactly what's going to come out. 
You know, so that's why it also, feels natural to you. And also feeling like what you have is worth saying, right? A lot of times when you're trying to convince someone, it ain't even necessarily that you believe what the fuck they're talking about. It's almost like you you like the fact that they believe what they're talking yeah. about. So just if if I speak with conviction and I can look you in your eye and I'm telling you, and hit, to kind of backtrack, what's so powerful about what I say specifically in my speeches and I think why it works is because... Without the things I'm saying in my speech, I wouldn't have even been up here to give the speech. Mm -hmm. So, And I can say that up here. I'm like, you guys, I'm telling you for a fact, these are the things that I did to get to the part where I'm even here talking to you in this situation. Mm -hmm. So and, and because I believe it, because to me and my anecdotal evidence, it is true. Somebody going to get that. Now, not everyone's going to get it. And I'm actually getting much better with that. I'm not trying. I, if, I, if I can't get you, I can't get you. Even though I'll I be wanting to get them. <laughs> I, I, I wanna, oh, I all want, 8 billion of y'all oh, motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, it's, it's really interesting. And it's funny because Steve <laughs> was the same way, Derek. Shout out to Steve Carl. Steve O. Because he's more like you. Mm -hmm. When you're having a conversation with someone, and let's say they have a limiting belief, you, your, your whole thing, and Steve as well, is like, hey, it sucks, you know, that when you do get belief, come holler at me, right? Which is... Right. I totally understandable, especially when it comes down to like energy expenditure. I totally get that. For some reason, my brain, mm -hmm. when I hear someone have a limiting belief, I, I, I have to say, I have to challenge it for them to hopefully gain more belief in whatever it is they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I get off on that where it's like you and Steve are like, I mean, you know, that's just not my cup of tea. And, and that's okay. Perfectly fine. <laughs> right. That's perfectly fine. It's just fine. the way this is story is the way my brain was yeah. wired and that's yeah. okay. But what about you, Tom? When you hear someone having a, uh, a, uh, a problem, a pain point, but let's say specifically limiting belief. What what desire do you have to help them get that, or is it just are you more like D, like yeah, it is what it is. Huh? Figure it out when you do. I think with a lot of people, um, you know, getting getting over something, or it's like oh, they, you know, you can lead people to the light, but like they need to kind of see that that's the correct move for them to begin with. Um, and so, like you know, I I think we've been hyping you up but like i think you needed to do some public speaking to realize that like this is for you you know we could be like bro you need to do this blah 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 but like at some point it'll always be on on you to like be the actual right. captain of that and and you know take ownership of it and actually do it so um i mean i'm down to hype people up but at some point it's like yeah you kind of need to land there yourself in my yeah. book yes uh, go ahead. i about to say if i could piggyback on that it's funny i just had a conversation with my brother and my cousin the other day and they were talking about i think he had a i was saying that people always tell me i can't do what you do you know what i mean mm. and, he, and my cousin was surprised He's like damn people really like a man will tell you that he can't he i couldn't see myself doing what you do like damn i wish i could do that and i was thinking about you and that you would be like well come on you don't you about it let's do it yes. and i was thinking about myself in comparison to that and i'd be like Tough break, nigga. Let me know when you, you know? <laughs> like. I, you're not gonna sit here and tell me that you can't do what I do. If you feel that way, then what? My energy expenditure has to be towards people who feel like they can do what I can do and want to, and gonna hit me up about it. So I was kind of getting through that in my head, and I was telling my cousin he he couldn't believe that people would tell me that, and I'm like, bro, I'm a new model. People tell me all the time yeah, that they you probably get that more than anybody. I get that more than anybody. You know what <laughs> right, I mean? Right. People forever tell yeah. me they can't do what I do. <laughs> right. So, for, but for me, because of that, I try to be around people who can see past the shit that that is so crazy in their minds, so that I can kind of grow my energy and and, and put in a, a, a almost a like space a more productive way, especially for yeah, like your brain work, yeah, right? yeah. It's just kind of more productive way when I'm around people who are like minded or want to be more so like minded. Um, but yeah, I was just kind of piggybacking off. So the two said. things that I that I get from this situation is what I'm learning mm -hmm. is, so let's say someone's having a limiting belief. They didn't ask me to help. Don't I didn't I didn't ask you to help raise my belief, right? That's just something I'm just imposing on people. True. So I have to be cognizant of that. Also, they they might I don't know where they are on their journey. You know, and, and, I, and I'll try to question and ask questions to get there. And I'm learning how to understand that. But I guess ultimately what I need to do, and, and I have been getting much better at this, is finding out, do you even desire something? Because the way I see it is, let's say, oh, I can never be a public speaker. Or I can never be a nude model. And I say, well, do you desire that? And they say, well, absolutely. I just don't know how. Then that's where I come in. Because I'm like, yeah. okay, we, we, in my opinion, then we have to find a way to change your, your, your paradigm. Right. 
And the reason why I believe in that is because at one point I was like scared to do certain things. And then I heard somebody give me some belief and then I, then I used it. So I think both ways are good, but just personally, I don't know why my brain does that. No, it's because of your story, bro. You had to transform yourself. Whereas like, say for me, my story has been just kind of, my, my theme has always been to just be a fucking person. If you be a person and that's kind of led me to become this new model and whatnot, just my form of being a person. But I've always been like a kind of solo journeyman. So whatever I'm going to do is probably going to be weird as fuck anyway. So you're probably not going to be into it. And I expect that. But if you're into it, you're going to be into it. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's kind of how I've run. I've never really tried to impose myself. But if you because I know it's kind of I'm always into a little different stuff, yeah, yeah. <laughs> even if it's something intellectual, like not everybody's into the topic. Most. Most. You know what I mean? So I've never tried to pull people in. But if you bout it. Come on. Let's talk. Let's get colloquial with it. You know what I mean? Mm. Let's talk. So, um, but just being a model, bro, like it's it's <laughs> you going you gonna run into people always saying you that they can't. I, I'll give you an example. I always get like a couple people that hit me up and say, matter of fact, perfect example. I had a young lady hit me up back in May, asking me, "Hey, I really love what you do, modeling all that stuff. I really want to get into it. What can I do?" Perfect, right? Hey, I send you a link to a meetup that's happening in two weeks. Here's the link. Here's the email. This is what time I'll be there. Hope to see you there. Did she show up? Not at all. But she hits me up a couple of last week or so. Hey, mm. I'm, I still want to do that model thing. Hope you're well. Like, no, you're not serious about mm. it. So why am I going to waste my energy when you really just saying something just to say it? You're admiring, which is fine. But I had to learn how to separate myself even from like an admirer to a person who really serious about utilizing my energy to get something, you know what I'm saying? Something for it going. See, now I think that I'm starting to get to okay. that understanding because again, somebody can say, Oh, I wish I could do that. And then you say, well then come on. And then if they, if they fight tooth and nail, then now I'm getting to the point where I'm just like, Oh, you know, it right. is what it is. Right. Right. And here's, and here's you know, where my ego comes in. They're not wrong. They're living their life to the, to the best of their means in the way they want to. There's nothing inherently right or wrong about any damn thing, in my opinion. Right. It's only the, the right or wrong that we give it, right? So, and I'm getting better at that. So, if someone attacks my worldview or paradigm, my perspective, I'm, I'm trying to get better. Mm -hmm. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying to get better at saying, they, we have completely different Everything. 24 hours you know is saying? way different, right, right. yeah. Even even a twin would have such a different perspective of the way the world is. Like, so, But but then a part of my brain's like, well, how come most of us know not that we don't want to kill each other? So there is some things that we all do kind of think alike. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We I do mean, have the same perspective. But even in that, there's different ways. That maybe it's okay to kill somebody if they killed your mom. Exactly. Or, you know what I'm saying? So, no, no that's, that's, that's a real thing. So <laughs> even... even <laughs> Because I, I, you ask most people, if someone does something to your mom, then it's, they'd be it's completely World War III. Right. <laughs> and that's get, like the standard. That's accepted. Just getting, and, and then <laughs> it always goes back to the storytelling, right? And it's just the story you believe. So even like this Palestine stuff going on right now is like two different people believe two different stories and, and it can get deadly. Right. The stories that they believe and, and, and maybe the, the story could be true. It could be false. Whatever it is, Doesn't it's a matter. story that they believe. Doesn't matter. And look what it's doing. And, mm -hmm. and it could cause, you know, issues in the world. So right. Right. who am I to say that my story is the story? You know <laughs> what I'm saying? But what I am getting better at is, listen, you could do what you want to do. I'm telling you, if you have this problem and you want to not have this problem and you don't know where to begin, I have something that could potentially help you. It might not. It might be, you know, maybe D's way or maybe Tom's way is better. But if you won't listen to me, it could work. And just so happens, a lot of people have said that my worldview has helped them. So I just figure I'm getting much better at taking way fewer things personally. Right. <laughs> if, so, if someone, and again, I'm That's not part perfect. Of it, it's part of growth. And my whole growing up was a sensitive kid. Mm -hmm. That's what I, you know, I take a lot of things sensitive. And my whole thing was, I'm not gonna say it's right or wrong, but <coughs> I would never, you, you, my, the golden rule is so important to me personally. You treat people how you want to be treated, right? Like if I tell you, D, I'm gonna be there at seven, and I'm there at seven, I would expect you to also be, and, and right. we do that, we have that relationship. Um, so you treat people how you want to be treated, but what, let's say, you know, we had a situation, but I was always, you know, screwing you over. Right. And I would imagine you're like, no, I don't really like that. Like, it's not cool. That's not how I treat you. So there's a part of me that's like, well, no, treat people. And I, ex I expect a certain 
certain degree level of decency, right? <laughs> human, but, but even in that, like if I give a person a homeless person five dollars, there's a subset of people that will say that was a good act. Mm-hmm. But there's a, also a whole another subsect that'd be like, absolutely not. I got to work and I got this and I got my, I ain't got gas in my car. So, and they would think that you were an idiot for helping. So there's different worldviews on, on one thing that, yeah, is that right or wrong to help a homeless person? You know, I, this is the, that person's perspective and what, how you grew up and how your parents raised you right. and what TV shows you watched. And then how, what, if, I'm telling you, it get deep. It be down to the commercial you watched to the girl you liked. <laughs> All type of things that'll make that decision man. happen. And then you realize There's so many parts to a 24 hours, man. Especially but before the ages of like five and seven years old, how, how much we don't, we don't even remember. Right. Who we are right now has so much to do in those informative years in the beginning. That's why I like it. Bringing a child into this world in this world is so much more than just bringing a, a human. It's like you're bringing a human that could potentially affect. Right. It's a, you're yeah. adding to this, the whole the human story. story. <laughs> and I feel like we don't, as a whole, don't understand the significance of of the early parenting and like how that shapes who you are. Mm-hmm. So even one of you know the story I talk about where my grandmother, if I think I can't say I can, that has now manifested 25 years later right. into really spreading that. She just thought that one day <laughs> she's trying to raise me. So my point, and that was one of the good, what about some of the bad stuff? Well, you know, listen, I love her, but she forced me to finish my plate when I wasn't, that's a terrible habit. Right. It's an awful habit. And then over the years, you repeat the same thing again and again. You're going to get better at it. And guess who's really good at eating food? I'm like the goat. I'm like, I'm the bride Jays at food. Oh, he said, who's the goat? And you know what, Tom, you and, I'm, I'm asking you first, Tom, what's your relationship with food? <laughs> you know, it's funny because I feel like I, I grew up not so much about like to finish your plate as much as um, drink your milk, but um, we were the, the family, like my mom was, my dad is a heavier guy, but he never cooked, he didn't do shit. My mom was like skinny AF and mm-hmm. still is. And so what she would do is like, we'd have a family of four and she'd put like, two chicken tenders in the oven and then like half the bag of like potatoes. And you'd be like, mom, like, please more, please. So, <laughs> so I, we, we, had a, we had a problem. Yeah, time like, was that's started. crazy. Yeah. I, I, I straight up was, so I, we had more of a, like, if there was food <laughs> left over, it was like a, what the, like we didn't have leftovers. That's it was crazy. Like, you had to eat quick to like get your second healthy yeah. before it was gone type thing. So oh. see growing up different. What man. Was, so what was your relationship with food? Um, I mean, I started off shitty just like any West side Chicago, kid it was all leon's oh my god bro it was <laughs> it was fucking pizza Mild puffs sauce, and it's yeah, mouth sauce it's on mild, everything right. ramen noodles every night <laughs> oh all, all types of bullshit so my diet was terrible and then um my mom once we got to the suburbs she was uh, well, actually she was always cooking my mom has always kind of been a cook type of deal so we had dinner and stuff like that and uh um, like green spaghetti but it was just, it was still it was good food but it was Bad food, yeah, if yeah, you will. Food, yeah, that shit. So <laughs> the food shit is good. Delicious. To this day, I can't stay over my mama's house for too long because <laughs> the shit is just too good. I'm like, I, <laughs> this is bad. I can't do this. But as an adult, I eat a lot more clean. I've always, since I've become an adult, I've always eaten a lot uh, more clean. Um, but because of that, I do kind of allow myself to fuck up every now and then. Because my diet relatively is a clean one, so I'll get some. I don't know. Every I, now and again, right? I, I, you know, when we when we smoke a little bit, I'll go down to Seven Eleven and rampage through them up. <laughs> uh, I've, I've had some moments leaving your house. Right. <laughs> How do you stop at Taco Bell four times? Right, right. It's, it's ridiculous. I'll tell you. So no, nah, it's, it's but it's it's pretty clean for the most part. Um, my relationship with food is is pretty solid. I say that. Lucky mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My relationship. Is, it, you know what? I'm not mad. It's it's been beautiful. It's, it's been beautiful. My relationship with food has been beautiful. Mm. That's the one thing. That's I thought public speaking was my goat pain point, and it was it was out there. It was definitely in that it was on the rush Mount Rushmore of my self development biggest pain points. But I'm like, you know what? And it was a good one, mm. and I'm proud of that. And it's about to really transform my life. But the food one is the is the. Game seven. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Tie it up. You got the ball. He's the best defender. Of the, my food is the best defender of all time. Shaq. Right. Dennis Rodman. All, all the sliders all the way to 100. Just let's go. Come right. on. You ready for me? And uh, it's been such a. I bet. And I, I want to like just interject because yeah, I feel please. like Derek and I could probably like uh, 
sympathize to some degree. Like I never had that struggle. Um, and you know, I had my brother and I, we've all, we all know people that, you know, struggle with that. And it's such a, a monumental thing, not only For from sure. just a health standpoint, as well as just like a, um, mental standpoint from a confidence Oof. level and mm. like it you know so it's somewhat mean. like you you know you could be the coolest guy in the world uh super fun make tons of money but you're 400 pounds like you're you're gonna limit your um Energy. your your at least your sexual partners and probably like people just judge you and it's like yeah. a different thing and you it's such a business all such a of, pivotal it's like a, you know growing up if you were like crippled or something like yeah, it's just or like it's cleft a tough lip or something like, like that oh, yeah, exactly it's just yeah. like not not yeah it's like it, it sucks, and I, I really appreciate that I, I don't have that struggle. But it's it's also tough for me to like relate, you know, because it's like mm -hmm. food to me was always like whatever I could eat pretty much no, whatever, and sure. I always end up about the same weight. Like I don't, I don't it right. doesn't go anywhere, and so I, you know, and I, but I've obviously seen the other side. So I and that's I, the thing too, like metabolism is a big thing. That's probably why I've never really had to think about food like that because I've always my metabolism has always been good, but so I've always been is, very is active. In, is great shape too, right? Not I wouldn't say so, but she ain't never she's, she ain't, she ain't been fat. No, I mean, she, I mean, you get older with age, you get a little pounds on you and whatnot, but she's not like a out of shape person, I should say. Okay, that's You know what I mean? She's I'm active, right. does a 10,000 steps a day type yeah. of deal, you know, goes to the gym all the time and whatnot. Um, but yeah, we, I've always had a good, and plus I've always just been a mobile guy and I've always counted like, I, it's funny because as I've gotten older, I used to be like, you know what? I can eat a lot of different shit because I'm always going to be burning this stuff off. Mm. So like, I'm, bro, I do 30 miles on my bike. Like it ain't nothing, yeah, you know easy, what I mean? Yeah. So it's not, like that relationship with food wasn't the same for me because I was always I always had a very uh, mobile lifestyle too. Yeah, so you was able to like pretty much burn exactly. Those Kid, that's always been in sports. I used to tumble, you do the flipping shit first. Then I got into basketball. Then I do bikes all so day now. Been, you've always been just been active. Exactly. So I've always, but I always that comes back to me really breaking down to being just a human. Humans are naturally one of the most mobile animals in history. We covered the whole earth. We walk, bike, pedal, swim, <laughs> boat. Kinda, like, we yeah. going to get there. We going to fly soon. We going to fly. Look, we going to get some wings. GPT. <laughs> right. Well, help us. But what I'm saying is that's part of my story. You know what I mean? Like, I understand my body is a anatomically modern human that's mobile. Mm. I'm a nomad. Like, I've always been inspired by those type of things. Like, if you just move your body, you're going to look like all these little, you know, motherfuckers who <laughs> look like that. So, I, I just try to give my body what it's meant to do if in my own brain, if that makes sense. But, but you were kind of already, you just do that naturally though too, right? But that's what I'm saying. I've always been inspired by just what is the natural uh -huh. process of being a human. When I look back at the hunter-gatherer tribes and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? They they are moving. They're eating off the land, but they're moving here. They're moving so there. So when you were playing basketball, were you thinking of that? Or you just wanted to go play ball? Well, no, I was just playing ball then. Okay. But I'm saying your your lifestyle, because of that, I probably had a more or a less sedentary how, how am I saying? Am I saying it right? My life wasn't as sedentary. So I wasn't just going home playing the video games every single day. I had to go to practice. I had a game. Mm -hmm. I had to prep. I had to do that. I had to try to eat right. I had to go to the weight room, you know? Right, right. So these things are built into my ecosystem to where now, if I'm as an adult, I don't play basketball anymore. I don't flip and do that shit, but Would you still be I still want to be active. So now I got a bike and right. I'm gone. You right. know what I mean? So it's still like, I, but I wouldn't have done that. I'm, most people are not going to ride a bike 365 days a year. <laughs> you know right, what I mean? Right, 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 exactly, but because of my lifestyle, that's why you're so unique. You, but I, that's you're a, one of the greatest people I know, Chris. Man, that's why I don't I try to. It. I don't try to force people to be like me though, because I know this you know, shit ain't going. Bro, ain't nobody about to do this stuff. But if you want to do it, I mean, we on we on squad. Let's go. Yeah, you um that that food relationship. So let's talk about this. I've been fasting uh -huh. a lot recently. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. For a month straight, I didn't eat. I just drank water. And it was actually super... I, I've fasted before, and we've talked about this on the show before, but for those who don't know, it's, it's really good for something called apophagy, which is a self-cleansing of your cells. Mm -hmm. And one of the main reasons why I considered it was because I have CLL, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, which is a, a, a cancer of your blood cells. I figured it can't hurt to maybe try to work on my blood cells. Right. Like, well, why not? <laughs> but, but the thing is, it takes some, some willpower and some grit to beat the temptations, especially when you have a food addiction, mm -hmm. right? So I've done these fasts, and but now because, you know, we, we've both been learning this at the same time, at being more and more aware as opposed to just doing something just to do it. So 
Now, but well, before when I would fast, I was just fasting, just just hold on until hour twenty four. Well, now I'm fasting with when I do have a temptation. What am I feeling? What am I thinking? Why? And and what happens is if I've gone five days, which I have before, and I know what that you're not going to die from not eating. The hunger is not; it'll go away because I've done it for five days. So when I when I get off the fast and I only go for four hours, and my body's telling me you're hungry. And, I'm, and, and now because I'm fasting, I'm able, because I'm more aware of the feelings and the thoughts in my mind. Now, you, you're you not hungry because we know real hunger. You have you don't experience that. <laughs> you felt that before. And and, and not even. Well, I, so what I was, to be honest, I don't know if I've ever been truly hungry in my mm-hmm. life. I don't think I've ever felt like I need to eat something and I'll do whatever, like true hunger. I'll maybe, murder this bitch. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> maybe I've, I've been like, oh, you I know, maybe a little parse, you know, you play some ball or something and afterwards you want to get a little energy. But for the most part, like clearly mm. like, I was 400 pounds. I ain't never been right. hungry. <laughs> in my life. Uh, but, but, but it's funny. You would tell yourself when I get the trigger, are you hungry? And it's like, and, and what the fasting is helping me do is say, no, you're not. No, you're not. You've been triggered by something. And, and, and now I'm noticing the triggers, too. It's so like, and doing DoorDash. So what that has done, it's putting me in the lion's den mm-hmm. during a fast. And then I'm getting, I'm getting hit with the stimuli, which is helping. And because I've already made the, I'm, I'm going to do the fast. And I'm doing this with this kind of therapeutic and meditative thing. It's like, boom. It's almost like if you're a coke addict and you want to win, I'm such an extremist with it. My whole thing is put the cocaine right here <laughs> right. and don't snort it then. Let's see if you really won. Mm. And I know that's extreme, <laughs> right? Because a lot of people are like, oh, man. But I like, for me, in my story, the extreme is what has gotten me to where I am today. Right. So, like, doing those 75 hard challenges, that's extreme. Or doing five-day water-only fast, that's extreme. Or doing the exposure therapy where I'm putting crazy mustard on my face, and it's extreme. But it gets you extreme results because I'm telling you, right. a, a year ago, you ain't going to get me public speaking. I, I mean, I, I would have been like, I want to do it, but I would have been hor- horrified. Right. But now because I've because of the exposure therapy... It works for all things, no matter what it is. Exposure therapy is, you got to expose yourself to whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. That's mm-hmm. the way to do it. You methodically do it. Think about what you were scared about in the beginning. And then the more you do it and you realize your thoughts are bullshit, the scary, the, the fear is bullshit. And then you just do it more and more and more. And you go further and further and further until you accomplish the goal. Right. That's exposure therapy at its finest. And by the way, I'll help you do it. I'm coming out with a course and I'm doing one-on-one to help people do exposure therapies. Nice. nice. Somebody actually hit me up and I, I should, Oh, you know what? The text didn't go through. <laughs> Someone followed me from one of my videos and said, do you offer a course on exposure therapy mm. verbatim? And that's what you offer to people. And I, and I was like, I actually don't have the course at the moment, but I do offer a one-on-one. I can help you through it personally. And then, and then he signed up for a calendar link, but then he canceled it for whatever reason. But my point is, is there's people out there. God bless you. There's people out there that would be interested in a course for exposure therapy, mm-hmm. clearly, right? Especially because I'm telling you it works and that's part of what my story is anyway. So, and we talk about find parts of your life and your story and then find a way to put it up digitally. Right. To, so I'm gonna do that. But my point is, is the exposure therapy is, is so, and I know it's not really, because you kind of been able to do this. So you haven't really had to transform that. You've been doing kind of extreme things right. since you were younger. Most people aren't, like you said, aren't going to be able to just move to Brazil. I, what was it, how old were you when you did that? I was like 23. I was saying, like, some people will never leave their hometowns. You know what I'm saying? So, they, so you've been an extremist. To some, obviously, you right. do, you're an extremist too. As a matter of fact, Tom, would you call yourself an extremist in certain aspects? Probably not. No, I'm not. I'm definitely not one of those guys that's like sees a cliff and is like, let's fuck it, let's climb this bitch, let's jump off it. Like, Me neither, Tom. And I'm, I'd like to think I'm not like passive you know as an entrepreneur you got to be like kind of aggressive and got to be like this is risky but like fuck it i'm confident in myself mm. but i'm definitely not the like you guys want to go skydiving like let's just yeah i guess i wasn't really meaning that part of extremists i mean just when you do things are you willing to take it to a level that most people are not in order to, to make it great right. you know i wish i was better we had a podcast just i would the other say day. that's what this is 
I mean, yeah, you Your know, I appreciate you is, saying that. I appreciate you saying that, but I felt like, so we did an interview with somebody else. He was, it was a remote guest, but the guy was so just like, he, he opens up gyms. And so anyone that's like super into fitness, I feel like is a little yeah. cuckoo to begin with, but he just like, the way he, <laughs> talked, the way he talked about, and again, Jim is obviously good, but like, he's, you know, an extreme guy, but he just, he was such a competitor and he's just like, you know, I wake up and he's like, I just like to like almost like torment myself. He's like, he's like, I'll be, like, nope. I'll be like rolling out of bed. He's like, you know, the last thing you want to do is like hop in a cold plunge. He's like, I hop in the cold plunge. He's like, I'm hungry. I'll be waiting 12 hours to eat just cause to like, just to like do shit like that. And he just, you know, he's the guy's his eyes are a little wide. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not like that. You know, and I was yeah. like, he's a very accomplished entrepreneur, but like the whole interview, I'm just there. Like, you know, this I'm, I'm glad I'm proud of what I'm doing, but like, hopefully I don't need to be like that. Like, I'm just, I don't think I'm built like that guy. You and know, you are, like, you are, yeah, you are. That's, that's okay. okay but, but that's why this works for you right here. Right. Yeah. You so, know what I mean? So no, I don't think I'm a, a huge extremist. You know, I think I definitely, it's like, you got to do what it takes. Um, but I don't know. I definitely don't have that absolute dog in me i will say and i'm okay with that you know like that some people especially with entrepreneurship are like i'll fucking cut off my limb if it yeah. gets me closer to like, <laughs> you see a lot like, of those people too I'm, yeah i'm i'm not really about all that like i, I like i like what i'm doing yeah. but you know it's like i'm not yeah i can't uh, but you know what time to piggyback off that i love seeing those extremists like that because it, it lets me know where i am and it's like you know what i'm not that and it, it, that's perfectly okay like people really are wired differently some people can go 12 hours with, while starving or wake up and just cold showers all day and sit in ice tubs and shit like that we can do it i could do it but that's not part of my 24 7 hour journey and, and you don't need and you, and i not, don't right the, the reason why so I, as a person who's done a lot of those kind of things and, and i like that world you're doing that because it, it, it's a way if if you need those tools to get something right right yeah. if you're not if you two aren't reaching for a mindset that you're already at the mindset that you desire or you're going to go to the mindset that you want. But if there's a certain mindset where maybe you have felt lazy, maybe you have felt lost, maybe you have felt whatever, some of these extreme tools can mm -hmm. get you there. It can get you results. And for me personally, exposure therapy to the extreme degree, for me at least, was it worked, you know. But again, as we talked about in the beginning, that's that's my story. Right. And not, and you know, but in it, and, and I'm just, obviously that's a whole market that people cold showers is a thing for a lot of people, but yeah, I don't think it's wrong. If, if you're like, oh, I can never do it. Well, no, that's the problem. Some people say they could never do it. You literally just said, I could do it. This is not my thing. Right. There's a difference, but there's a lot of people that really feel like they can't. So it was like, okay, is there a desire there? Or it's one thing to say, I just don't want to. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to be like, oh, I just don't think I could because you physically can't. Yeah. That's a whole different market of people too. That's kind of that's probably more your genre of people that you would be targeting too. Like if I'm not, if I'm not, yeah, for sure. You know, the people who see it and they're like, man, I, I don't think I can do I'm that. I'm close. Yeah. Right, right, right. So and I think that that's where my target. I'm starting to learn that is more they're close. Mm -hmm. They just need that little whatever. They need to hear it. You know, on, on their search, maybe I say something in a way that clicks to them, mm -hmm. and or they maybe somebody else. And I'm just finding them on that part of the journey. But I am learning. That if they're at this level, that's not my target audience because then I get frustrated because now I'm, I, it's hard for me to believe in you more than you believe yourself, especially for an extended period of time. Because mm -hmm. I do believe every human being, I feel like we're capable, I feel like human beings are capable as fuck. Like we are so dope in general. It's, it's different to not want to do something, but to just say that you cannot, no, you physically can. You can physically get into a cold shower. I, I promise you can. It might be uncomfortable. You might not want to do it, but you can. Mm -hmm. You can fast for five days. You know, you might not desire it, and that's cool, and I'm okay with that. But it's people like, oh, I want to, but I can. It's like, ooh. Yeah, I think you can. the people in your target audience would be the people who say they can't. But 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 also desire to. Right. So that is. They can, I, but they desire. If I think that's I can, interesting. say you, I can. Yeah. That's why that meant so much to me so right. it's a good point i'll tell you this though M most people have limiting beliefs though that's true most people don't think that they can and it, it's one thing to say i don't desire it but when if you ask them the truth w would you change something if you could let's just say you can but if you could would you change it and they say yes i feel like a lot of people have that based on just my anecdotal evidence the people who i've interacted with a lot of people just have such that they don't think they can and then they don't th they don't want to but then like i don't know if i could do the energy to, to muster up the energy to do that but but they want to it's like no 
you can, man. You just, mm -hmm. you might have to hear something or change, you know, and that's where I try to come in and maybe I can shift how you look at things. Right. Because that's what I did. You that's know what literally saying? your motto. Right. So if, if maybe, maybe I can help you because, because, and, and here's the thing, I can't necessarily tell you what to think, but what I can tell you to do is maybe you can find another way to think for you. So my, what I try to say is not like you got, you have to take cold showers. My thing is you got to do what you got to do to get better. Right. And only you know that. And you could take some of the things in my, I, my tools, you could take some of these tools, you could take some of Tom's tools, but whatever you do, you got to be able to change how you look at it. Right. If you're in a shitty spot. And you want to get out of it. And you want to get out of it. <laughs> Main point. Right. And then a lot of people want, are in a shitty spot. And I, and I think they kind of like being in a shitty spot. I think sometimes uncertainty, that's a tough one for humans. Mm -hmm. We want to be certain. That's why so many people have anxieties and stress now. It's, why are you stressed out? It was be, it's because you're uncertain of what's about to happen. Oh, I don't know what to do. Is it going to get the bills paid? Is she going to dump me? It's like, if you can be comfortable being uncertain, mm -hmm. that's a cheat code. Because I'm uncertain when I go on that stage and I don't know what's going on. I'm not going to forget my, my, my words. Right. Am I going to stumble? Am I going to look dumb? Am I going to fall? There's all kinds of things. That can go. I don't know. But I'm okay with it now. I'm okay with And here's what really helps. Ooh, this will really help, y'all. And some, if someone could take this, take it. <clears throat> Let's say, and I'm, you know me, I'm extremist, right? Let's say I go on the stage and I'm the worst speaker of all time. The worst. This dude was cringe and he was awful. Crickets. Just awful. The next day, what about your life would have changed? You'll still have to pay those bills. You'll still have your best friends. You'll still have your family. Like the only thing that'll change is that the people's, the, the worst case scenario is the people in that audience would say you're a bad speaker and that is it. That's the, that's the absolute worst thing that can happen, which has no, there's no like, tangible things that you're like in danger. Right, your sales aren't melting. Then nothing's gonna happen. <laughs> and, and then if you find, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change, if you look at that bullshit, and we say this every pod, but I'm gonna say it because it's so important. So let's say I do shit the bed, or as the white folks say, uh, screwed the pooch. <laughs> Is that what you that's guys that's say? That's <laughs> that's I really, I really I screwed the pooch got, on that yeah. one. I ain't never heard that one. <laughs> that's like a very white person to Is it? Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, have you heard it like British or something, I don't know. <laughs> like, imagine the first person who said that. I don't know that. if I've ever said it unironically. <laughs> <laughs> I really screwed the pooch on that one, Bob. I don't know why you put that like on white people, you know? Like I feel no, like it was a white people. Like that's that's definitely white. That, no, that's no, definite. No, you got to own that with time. That's a white people thing. Oh, that with time. <laughs> you better take that to the grave. <laughs> no, but um, so worst case scenario, I d I'm the everyone there thinks I'm terrible. I can learn from why was I terrible. So then look at that as tools. Literal, like powerful tools. So the, the more you, the more you mess up, the more you fuck up, you have even more data of how to get it better for the next time if you really desired it. That's why I understand now what they mean by you fall in love with the journey as opposed to the destination. Right. Because shit's gonna happen, Tom. In your in your business adventures with Chicago Podcast Studios and Nova Digital, there's been up and downs, right? It's been some up and downs, yeah. And some of them downs feel kind of down, don't they? They feel a little down occasionally, yes, sir. <laughs> but, but don't you like oh, okay? I'm how do we like your mindset? I would I'm say is okay. It was a down, but what can we do to not have those downs no more, right? Yeah. How can we improve it? Sure. If you look at the bullshit like that, it's a cheat code because then you almost want bullshit in a weird way. Give me the challenge. Mm -hmm. It's kind of that's why the a little shout out of ah, the ah. be dope embrace cringe, especially for public speaking or maybe making social media or making content in general. People are so worried about other people thinking you're cringe, right? So many people you read some of the comments like, "Oh, this is cringy," and the whole idea of this hoodie. And we actually talked about who I should be targeting the hoodie to, but the, the, the original reason why I brought, why I made the hoodie was if you embrace it first, then it can't be used as a weapon against you. Mm -hmm. Kind of like black people taking the N word kind of thing. Or when you watch, uh, you ever seen eight mile? We talked about this. When you watch eight mile Tom and Eminem on the final boss, when he was doing, when he's about to rap Papa Doc, 
He went first. No, I'm serious. This is powerful. He started saying all his bad things. I am, I am, I do live in a trailer with my mom. And he said all the things that were negative about him. So then when dude got up, he had nothing to say because Eminem had already embraced it. So how could you defeat him? Mm -hmm. Therefore, he won. So I use that as like a little metaphor of, you know what? I, it don't matter if I'm cringe if I go on stage because I'm embracing it. I almost want you to think I'm cringe because I've embraced it. It can't hurt me. Right. Cause I've already put it on myself. So if I go out there and, and bomb it, it don't matter. Cause I thought I was going to bomb when I had mustard on my face, my, on my face and ketchup on my shirt and all these crazy wigs and stuff. You think I'm worried about and, and I'm trying to help y'all like genuinely too. Like I genuinely like, you know how I am. I just want to help these people. So, and then I can speak from that and I no longer care if you think I'm cringe because I embrace it. Right. And it's powerful. Now, what we talked about was maybe changing who you're targeting this hoodie to instead of targeting someone who might need it as a way to to feel cringe. Well, those people need help still. And this would they might not be ready to be loud like this, you know, so you almost want to go aim at the audience who's already accepted. Right that they're willing to be seen and da, 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 da. And it makes sense. And it was a good point. Cause I'm like, Oh, cause the person who's going to purchase the hoodie is going to vibe with it because yeah. they want it. It, it. Not saying that you can't use it. Like, man, you wear this, it'll be a little mini form of exposure therapy, but those people won't be able to pull the trigger. They'd be more likely to pull the trigger on something that says I'm willing to try or something like that. <laughs> but like to, to say that I've already done it. Yeah. 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 And it's, uh, it was such a powerful yeah, way to it, look at the I audience. think the way that I described it last time we talked about it was, let's say somebody's just rolling up down the street and they see this on a mannequin. Damn, that's me. I, I, I can see that on myself. I need that going in there to purchase it right away. So clothing is more so of an identity factor where it's like, that looks like something I would wear. When we buy somebody something of clothing material, damn, I can see my girl in this. Or I can see my mom in this. I can see so-and-so in this. So I think it's something that's, like you said, something you're already embracing. With your courses, with your personal... Uh, that's what would help. That's you. what people, they want that one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> they want that, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm not there yet, but I'm really inspired. And how can I get there? They need that personal touch. With clothing, that's like a billboard. That's me. This is my flag. So I support you know what I'm saying? This is my identity. See, it's then, well, and the reason why I came with that idea is because what I was trying to do was differentiate myself right. from everyone. Right? I was saying, well, what if everyone else just has this flag, which I get, but what if this could actually have a utility behind it as well? And it does. And it, it, uh, as far as it can, and it still does. Right. It still does. It's just a matter of not targeting to those people. Mm -hmm. But my, my thing was, like, it'd be cool to, to have a thing that people could put on that would help them feel slightly uncomfortable. To, so then they would realize, you know, right. that the whole thing that I talk about. Um, it's a tough, it's a, we talked about it too. It's a but tougher it, but sell, it, but I, it's a tougher sell because the person who needs to, 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 the person who would need to buy this in order to, to use it for the utility might have a hard time pulling the trigger on it. Right. Whereas the person who already identifies with it, I, I'm already dope and I've already embraced cringe. They're closer to the point of purchase. Exactly. Because they already, because you don't, it's hard to make people try to feel like Superman. It's like some people just want to be Superman and that cape is all they needed to see it. Mm. But it's like some people you can't really make them become Superman by putting this on. It's like I already have to think I'm Superman and put that right. shit on, you know. And I think sometimes I get, I don't say laws, and I, I don't, I think this is actually in my It's opinion, part of your journey. I would say on it's the, a great. On the brand story. I would say it's a great pain point for me to have that I do, would, I would like to fix every single human being that I come in contact with that that desires and, and wants fixing is best to my ability. Mm -hmm. But I just, I gotta let go of that trying to get every single <laughs> human being on earth. Cause I'm telling you, I, I feel like a lot of people could relate to those three quotes. Yeah. There's thing, even that people, you might not want to go to the, to the luncheon with your work coworkers because you might feel weird because you, whatever. My point is that everyone could take, things that I talk about to some degree in some aspects of the life. The, the problem with that, is okay. Well, if you have a product or service or something like that, you have to find a way to market it to them. I think that's your. I think that's what speaking comes in, bro. I think you think so too. I, I think you. That's perfect. Actually, it's you want somebody perfect. who's on a basketball team, who's in a business meeting, who all have social anxieties. You know, like you said, everybody has these issues, and they can all use it. It's just about how you're targeting it. 
that's all. Like you have a service. Um, it's just target your speech towards that uh, specific group of people. Just like when we were at the event, you didn't necessarily target it for that audience, but the, it works because it's going to work with every single audience. You know what I mean? But it's just about you finding the audience and then just saying your speech, man. Well, I'm talking about as far as selling a product. Our products, I'm sorry. Product, yeah. I think it's, I still think it's hard to put it is. It's a, it's a hard service to on a product. Yep, it is. <laughs> you know what Dude, I mean? That's what I'm, it's, yeah, it's, we it's try actually, to sell us. <laughs> that's what it, which I think is commendable. It's I commendable. I to do that, it's but it's just hard to do. It's a, it's a hard sell. But I was. Because you literally got to make it feel like Superman when they put this bitch on. It's a service. The, and here's the truth, though. I have had. So, so hold, on, hold on a second. <laughs> hold on a goddamn second. I've had people who have worn stuff of mine and literally said, I felt different wearing your thing. Right. And then my personal story, I feel different wearing my shit. And it's like a, it's a way to affirm yourself. If you wear something that says be dope every day, like I've been pretty much wearing my brand and be dope since 2020. So four years, I'm, I'm pretty much wearing one of my products and the whole, it's an empowerment brand. Right. I'm like re enforcing these thoughts patterns and that's why it's, it's coming to fruition because I so it is like a service on a product still right especially and, and then people have told me it has worked one girl shout out to her I'm not gonna put her name out there but she she lost one of her her, her babies growing up or as she was birthed and she, it was the anniversary of the death and then she went to her closet and said, you know, and she was having some different emotions and stuff and said, what product should I wear? And then she literally chose to be dope and then sent me like a long thing, made a video for me and everything. Nice. So like, that's a big powerful mo moment that they chose out of all their clothes they could. So in that sense, it also was a service. Right. So that's why I'm like, all right, what if I can, is there a way to like really, and that's how I feel about yeah. it. So I'm, I'm sure the energy comes off to the people who do buy it, but right, maybe as right. far as marketing it. Especially like with an advertisement, yeah, that's you know that's it's a harder sell. It's just you a can harder do sell, it, but it's a harder. And it's funny sell. because you offer such you don't your your offer is it speaks clothing is one thing, but you have a voice too. So your product can only say so much. It can say something like you just gave a great example, but they have to have the backstory mm, behind. Right, it, it's right, a right. lot to it, you know what I mean. But you can offer that service still through all of your other offerings. You know what I mean? It's just kind of, that's the billboard to start for a certain people. But I like what you were, what were we were talking about in that hoodie, in that, like, it, it really is for a, for a group of people who are already on it. And the fact that you can really just provide, um, like, just speaking and one-on-ones and courses and shit like that, like, you really have a different niche for each target audience. So I think you can reach all the people that you want to reach. It's just kind of like... Do it to different characters. Yeah, it's just character building, bro. That's that's what this storytelling shit since we've been learning it has really taught me. It's it's all about how many characters are you willing to create. We talk about... Uh, we mentioned Kanye, right? And one thing I love about his wild-ass story is that when he gets into character, he gets into character. Yeah, he stays I in ain't never thing. seen somebody get into character so hard for whatever crazy thing you believe in at that time. He gonna get into it. You know what I mean? So I just think with your targeted a focus like you can get into these different characters in these different places and put yourself in it i think it's a little different for you though you're not creating something new every single time you know what you about you just need the audiences which are going to be different and that's what you want you want to service this audience that audience that audience right. that's how i feel about your brand it's, and it's like it's like nation building it's nation building for sure and in nations you have different and i think your skill set is just to go to this group see what do y'all need what type of motivation what type of transformation do y'all need specifically that relates to this job or this skill or this industry and i think i think that the, yeah i think that is my skill that's your bro your skill is to get out here on this road and be a nomad about every single industry that could use your service just like the guy we saw when he said i my job is to come into your business and build culture that's blah 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 etc cetera, etc cetera. that's you you build the culture of transformation yeah. Some overall, mostly transformation, but mostly belief, resilience, and transformation. Belief, resilience, and transformation, sure. and you do that through convicted talking. So, and in public speaking, I would imagine it's the second closest to yours because a it's lot a of, performance. A lot of people say that public speaking is one of the hardest things on earth, if not the hardest. They say it's the hardest job. But then I'm like, well, have you tried new modeling? <laughs> That's probably pretty tough, difficult for most people too. I don't think it is, man. But it, like, well, I, like I said, I will say this. I will say this. 
I'll say this. See, that's the thing, though. That's a that's a mental thing. I, that's not even something physical. <laughs> that's just like you can know, do it. You can, <laughs> see, that's what I be saying. Like, no, yeah. you can do it. You might not choose to, or you might, but you could do right. it. You could do it if you I want to. I was about to, to do it. <laughs> right. Swear to God, I was about to do that. Right. So you, I, I that get would be it. my Super Bowl. That would be my Super Bowl. Well, no, it would still be just food. But <laughs> that'd be my next. That'd be Super Bowl old two. Right. Right. No, I mean it's it's not really. It's just something that just makes me. Oh, allows me to be human, bro. That's all I kind of see it. This I don't really see shit. it as this big triumphant thing. It's like it's my stage to be a person. I'm not doing shit. I'm really just moving and doing. Like <laughs> no, I, I get on stage, literally. bro. I get on stage and like let's say I got to start off with two minute gesture poses or something like that. I'm just trying to figure out what the fucking human body does. So okay, let me see if my limbs do this. Okay, two minutes. All right, let me see what muscles is gonna hurt in two minutes. Oh, the clock is up. Okay, what else can a human body do? This. Mm. So I'm not even all like, oh my God, I'm naked. What is this? Yeah, is, are they looking at the, but like, what about that first time? No. So the very first time you that you because weren't? bro, your body is going you gonna be thinking about your body. That's what I be trying to tell people. Like we're so focused. It's so hard for me to speak as a wait, model. The, wait, a lot wait of hold times. on. I'm sorry to interrupt you. The very first time you got on stage, to do it. Yes, yeah, new, new. You're modeling. thinking about what I'm telling you is my mind was thinking about my body. And the fact that, like, okay, this limb is going numb. Oh, this leg is getting a little strained. Oh, I'm shaking. Like, there's different stuff that you're thinking about as a model that the average person who's, like, looking at me, like, oh, my God, you're a model. I can never do that. Because you're thinking about, oh, are they looking at this? Are they looking at that? Are they judging? As a model when you're on, st- when, excuse me, as a model when you're on stage, you're not thinking about any of that stuff. Okay, let me Your body is. What were you thinking leading up to it? I don't even, I was excited. <laughs> Shit. Like excited for an opportunity to do it? Yeah. I was excited. See, that, that's what I'm saying. Like my mind doesn't go to the the fears or the half yeah. glass empty and all this stuff. But when I actually did the performance, the actual performance, like it's just the same as you getting on the stage finally, right? When I actually did the performance, I realized not even that I was thinking about these things, but if I thought I was thinking about those things, I couldn't. That's true. My body ain't allowing me to think about that. He's telling the truth, y'all. You know what I mean? You, yeah, you I don't can't even, even think, think about, about those stuff. Yeah, because you're, you're doing the performance. Right. And next thing you know, time has passed and you done performed and you go on to the next thing. And now it's repetition. Mm-hmm. And now you're more comfortable. And it's just like, now you're really just playing. Now I just play. I'm like, okay, what? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, just what can right. a human body do? So um, I think, but I also think, like we said earlier, bro, some people just really desire, desire the stage. And they're comfortable with being on a stage. And because it allows, I'm learning that it allows your mind to just go or you to focus on different things. Yeah, sure. It doesn't allow you to really think about all this shit. It's like Can't when a think. hyena is in front of yeah, you, real talk. what the fuck you That's about a good to way do? look at it. So stage performance is, it's, uh, it's one of those things that's healing. I feel like it's healing. Mm. Tom, have like you ever done some healing. stage performances? I don't think so. I definitely haven't been nude in front of people. Um, <laughs> have, done, you done, have you done like a best man speech or something so like that? So I've done a best man speech at my brother's wedding, but it was a really small wedding. But I've done, when I first started, um, not the podcast studio, but the um, with Anova Digital, I did a couple of speaking engagements. I spoke to like a chamber of commerce once. And that one, there was probably like 150, 200 people. Like it was a lot. Go ahead, Tom. There you go. But, go ahead, Tom. Okay, but, but let me just clarify. It was... Um, <laughs> So it was like, you know, it's like one of those like dinner type things. And there were a couple of people speaking and I want to just preface it with it. Like it definitely wasn't like a stage in the sense that like I was up and people were looking at me like it was a, I mean, I stood up type thing and everyone's like eating dinner, talking amongst themselves. And so half the people weren't paying attention at all. So like I just got through it, you know, did whatever. Mm -hmm. I did like one or two at like a library or something like that because I was like, oh, let me do like a class on how to you know, market or something like that. And so I had a couple of things. I think, like you said, uh, public speaking is like, the top fear of like a lot of people and it's a very um intimidating thing similar to to being a nude model but no definitely not my cup of tea but also like i'd like to think that i'm i'm decent when i get into it i think the the fear the the leading up to is the biggest thing and i'm sure when you're actually on stage it's like all right just focus on like doing me and stuff like you're not even tripping about Right, people not paying attention, maybe, or, or this and that, or like, do they think I'm cool? You're just like, let me just get through my shit. Yeah, like once like, you yeah. once you committed to it, it's like you get to a flow. I like you're that. You, know, you just, yeah, I know. Like, so leading up to the to the talk, that's when all oh, like it, it's almost like the it's like the climax to the to the story. You know, mm-hmm. it, it really is like that. It's like a story, and then because I, I was doing a really good job, uh, not one from reading this, but two just mentally to like. You, you put a little work in, but don't take it too serious, right? You just kind of, you, you put the work in, trust, start to trust the things that you trust that you're a speaker, trust that 
when the time comes, your brain will tell you the right thing, universe, God, whatever you want to call it. Just trust that it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Don't, that's not to mean that you don't prepare, because I'll prepare a little bit, but I try to clear my mind of it and, and watch something else and then and talk about, make play music. But then an hour leading up to it, it's like it's like almost like it's go time. And that's when like the and I can't even even pinpoint the it's just a anxiety. It's just a can't even pinpoint a specific anxiety thought. Anxiety. Yeah. And, and it's just like a yeah, ooh. It's time. Ooh. <laughs> it's a thing, right? And I was pacing. I'm like, and then now, so what I'm doing when I'm when I'm doing that pacing is I'm visualizing me because they, they actually did prove this. If you, the, the the performers who uh, athletes and performers when they visualize like them just walking through it, that's why they do walkthroughs and stuff uh, with a lot of sports games and 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 concerts. If you do the walkthrough, you can put yourself in a state so then when the time comes, you already know what to kind of, almost kind of eliminate some of the uncertainty. Practice. Yeah, practice. You talking yeah. about practice? Yeah, it's all practice. <laughs> but, 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 but specifically practice with the, with the mental, right? Yeah. And, um, but yeah, practice, I, I went on a deep dive with practice. Such a beautiful concept. Mm-hmm. Um, repetition, man. Right, repetition. So, the idea of, uh, with the thoughts, whoa, and I'm trying to visualize, and they hit, but then it's like, when it's go time, you just got to just, and here's what, what's so powerful, that go time is the cave to and my it, speech, and that's what makes the speech, in my opinion, beautiful as far as what you feel, right, because it's not even necessarily what the person said, it's how they made you feel, right, and if I can make you feel like, damn, this dude believed that because I do, the treasure you seek is inside the cave you're afraid to enter. If I want to go on stage, you're going to have to go on stage. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to feel that. And and it's so like it. that cave seems for, for most of us so dark and like, I don't know what the hell's in there. But it seems as though from my perspective, if you just just trust that you're going to be good, trust that you got the knowledge, trust that, or just trust that even if something does happen, who cares, ultimately, if you go into that cave, and that's that's me talking on the mic. So as I'm saying that line, I'm using that energy. It's like, that's why I'm up here, y'all, because of the cave. So this quote is for real. Mm Mm-hmm. Like for real, for you're real. walking into your cave at that moment. Literally, your performance. Yeah, that, <laughs> you being a performer, getting on stage, is you walking into, into a cave, cave, pretty much. But a lot of people have the fear of going into a cave. So but once like, you get on that, then you become a whole mental, different person, mentally a different person, because you can't even think about the fears that you had be- before you entered the cave. Because because I'm too in the moment now. Right, I'm too, too in, in the cave. You know what I'm <laughs> and again, what did we always what did we talked about before. You, uh, it's really hard to have problems in the moment. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to have anxieties when you're present at the present moment. You only have anxieties when you're thinking about some shit in the future. Right. Or you or you only have depression when you think about some shit in the past. But in the moment where I'm on the mic and I'm speaking, I'm just I'm so focused on the energies and whose attention I got. And I, to be honest, I'm not even really focused on what I'm saying. No. To you, some degree. You're out here getting your character it's, it's, off, it's, bro. It's wild. It's really wild. Now, and, and this was the first time, and this was actually very powerful, because this was the first time that I didn't have a slide deck. So the slide deck was a nice little cheat code to kind of, quote, unquote, stay on point, right? Um, but didn't have a, a slide deck this time. So it was, I had to go straight from the from yeah. what, my, what I remembered. Man, I felt like you heard it. Hopefully it came off smooth fluid and, and I made some points and hopefully somebody got some info from it but I literally wasn't yeah once I got up there and I made a little joke and I was getting people involved I don't know it just right. it felt so and natural I'll, first of all if you guys ever have a chance if you're a speaker at all if you ever have a chance to speak, speak in front of a black audience please do because I swear it is so cool time you got to speak in front of black audience it's so cool we're gonna let you know when you said something that's great cold as fuck we go, mmm, yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right, right. Let me, what she say, you like, if I gave you 50 or a million dollars, yeah, would she, you, with no string attached, would you take it? Let me hold some. Yeah. Let me hold that. <laughs> right, yep, right. I'm going to hold that. I just love the call and response culture of just which, when you were involved in a speaking engagement. Yeah, but I, look, I just, I feel like that helps to, uh, that, that helps the speaker. I've seen you in different speaking situations, right? I've seen you at a high school. I've seen you at the um, Black Wall Street event too, right? 
when you are in a crowd and that's a different audience in general and whatnot, different setting, but it's so cool. I feel like I saw you getting looser because you were getting a call and response too. For sure. You you can see somebody. Because I can react to it too. Exactly. exactly. And it so gives they, me content. And like you just flowed up. It's just like we're talking right now. And you can, I feel like then you can really just perform the character and, and I, I know we have a little different take on the performance aspect of it, but I feel like that's when you really get in your cave mode and you can just be the natural, yep, yep, you you feel me? You feel me, man? I hear you, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, and this and that, you know what I'm saying? You can actually engage with the audience as a performer that's telling a speech, too. And I, I just love that back and forth that they were able to give you and, like, kind of open you up and um, not necessarily loosen you up, but it just created no, another it, dynamic. Because it, it then, well, and I know you say we kind of have, a, I think we're talking about the same thing, essentially. When I say it's not a performance, I get what you mean just as a human being, you're, 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 you're doing your act. I'm saying performance as they're all here to look at me. I look at it you as- You got a chuck and jive type of shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah right, kind of. Right, right. I'm looking at it more as, no, I'm having a conversation with these 150 people. And in the black audience, you you physically having more conversation, whereas the non-black audience, I have to do more of the engaging of the questions. Right. I still want the conversations. I still want it to feel like you talking. I want every single person in the audience to feel like how I'm talking to you and Tom right now. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's the goal, at least. Right. And I'm trying to get great at that. Um, the, the only difference is there's a little bit more listening aspect on more one-on-ones, whereas there's not as much as much listening when I'm talking to an audience. Exactly. Different skills though, but you still, skills. that's what I love though. That's a different target audience, probably different industries in general, but you still have the skill set to implement yourself in those, you know? Mm -hmm. So for that audience is going to be more of a wide ranging topic. You know what I mean? But if you got the person hitting you up on text, do you offer courses? Do you offer one-on-ones? Right. That's more, you know, let me ask you this. Let me get into, you know, you probably want to even, Ask the question so you can get something out of them type of shit. Right. Um, just more personalized, but still target audience nonetheless. I love it, man. You know, I love it too, man. I just I just can't wait for you to keep these oh, speeches it, going. It, it, Tom, ooh, I hope. First of all, did you believe in me? Of course. No, I was actually, you know, I don't want to interject uh, in the middle of it, but I just want to say, you know, we've been doing this for probably like clo close to two years now because you were yeah. one of my, my yeah, first clients in and we just signed again for a year so yeah probably about two years now and i feel like all the things we've collectively wanted to do we've just like been doing on our own for real, oh, like, we yeah, really yeah. Yeah. can we can right yeah, yeah, for, right. <laughs> for real so though. um but no you know I, I think you know especially too like you've had um a little bit more of like a trajectory change like I feel like you maybe more so than Dierre kind of like we've kind of you know we were doing these things before and I know you have your businesses and such like that but I felt like you in the last two years have not like struggled but like been kind of like which yeah, way do I take this out. which way do I take this and to see you um you know getting these gigs I know you were like yeah I want to do speaking you know and like you you started with like I just want to help people I want to like help them embrace cringe and uh you know exposure therapy and then it's like okay maybe I can help people by um, you know, speaking and stuff, and just to see you do it is is very rewarding. Just as, as a though? friend, and just to see you, you know, in your suit and all that, like, it, just, <laughs> it makes clean. me happy. I was clean. That's it. That's <laughs> clean. I'm, uh, I'm glad that we uh, that we're all uh, killing it. You know? Yeah, I like that too. I like it too, man. Um, and here's the thing, like, cause yeah, I have such a big thinking personality. Like, oh, excuse me, I have a, I, I think big, I think crazy, because why not, right? <laughs> the story, <laughs> excuse I, me, the story I'm creating. Why not arenas? Why not? Like why not, baby? Why not the Super Bowl? Like why not? Why not? Why can't I be the first speaker of the Super Bowl? That, 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 that I don't. I, my point is, is think big. Right. Because what's the thing? What's the saying goes? If you aim for the stars and you miss, you still got to the land in the cloud. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. Right. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, it's, I think. It's, or it's like shoot for the moon, you land in the stars, or like shoot for the. Uh, the sun and you land in the clouds or something like that. I don't know. I mean, yeah, right, like right, right, right. Like you know what I mean. Long story short, <laughs> it's like if you aim big, then even if you miss, you can still hit something else that's big. Right. But if you only aim small, and, and some people don't even aim at all. Yeah, and yeah. It's, I was like, oh, could you imagine not aiming at all, Tom? Like <laughs> the zero aim, just <laughs> like you, you have. Bro, that's that's like plenty of people. Yeah, I know, not shooting right? for shit. Oh, that's that limiting belief <laughs> shit, and I'm like. If I find that you desire, if I find that you desire, and you just don't know that I'm gonna get you, mm. I'm because that's what I do. Chris, that's like 99 percent of the population. That's why I'm saying my target like audience <laughs> is big. I'm good. That's what. That's what I'm thinking. Breaking it down by industry, though. It, I'm telling you, I know. And it's and here's the thing. I know we're getting out of here, but here's the thing. 
it's that's a it's a it's a difficult pain point to solve is changing someone's psychology, right? To change someone's paradigm when they've had their lives, this is what they know of their life. So to really go in there and change someone's who they are and their Corn. identity is a difficult ask. But I think for because I'm doing it in and I believe a, a, a righteous way. The universe is going to thank me for that because it's such a big. It'd be one thing if I knew how to make bracelets, which is dope too. But how much change can you make with bracelets? You could probably do some, but like I'm trying to change your psychology. It's 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 easier to make a bracelet. I can find the materials and learn how to do it. It's I have it's so much more difficult to get into a person and ask the questions and mm -hmm. to truly listen and say what about this and what about that and then let's try to aim it this way. Do you see and then work it. It's a, especially from just speaking. One-on-ones is easier, but imagine on video, right. making a clip. And I've, and I've somehow happened to do it. So I'm like, I know I'm going to be able to do it speaking. If I've been able to do it making digital content, you just got to go inside your cave and actually do it. Right. And you're just putting a service out there. I mean, I, it's harder to do a service versus a product. <laughs> that's just going to be, that's what I'm learning. Like, hand in hand, is that's going to be the case. So for you, uh, I think figuring out people on a more personal level, that's going to help you mostly. And, and then just separating from like the speaking, not speaking engagement from uh, products and whatnot. That's more of a, for people that's already in it, speaking, that's going to service so many different people. And it's a bigger price tag on that too. Much bigger. Yes, <laughs> well, Tom, let me ask you, do you, what is your, do you have a product or do you just pretty much have services? Been, well, and so it's funny because I usually tell people just from an entrepreneurial standpoint that it's like to start a product business is tougher than a, a service business because it's just like, yeah, you just go do this sort of stuff. But I, I see exactly what you're saying. I'm not trying to like counter that but any means. But no, I mean, I've been always in the service business. I think we've talked about this, that it's like it's been productized to some degree that like, mm -hmm. you know, we, we produce podcasts. That's a, th a thing, although it is like a yeah, service. Yeah, so you know, it's but, like a thing, but it's also a service. But no, I mean. I think I, that's a new thing, though. You can now package a service world. as a product, but that's the yeah, that's, that's the first time it's been able to be a thing. But at some point, it, yeah, I, I still think of it as like a service because you know we're we're handing off nothing to you. At the end of it, it's like a digital, like you know, doesn't really exist type thing. So I still think consider it a service. I think so too. It's a, it's a it's a it's a service that's a product though. It's presented as a product where you purchase it outright. So you own that product. Technically, it's yeah, still a yeah. product, but it's a service. I think this is the first time it's a that thing. you don't have to be there to physically do the service. So it's turning a service into a product that's regurgitating service. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I think it's it, cool. It's very interesting. I think it's cool. It's, a, it's just another way to look. My thing is this. Humans, we are naturally workers. We want to work this earth. And I mentioned this to you, too. We are natural earth workers. But the thing is, with this digital age is we can separate money from work. So if I can make the service and make it residual and still do my actual work as a service, I'm winning. I'm cool. Right. I don't need that necessarily the work that I'm doing to make the money, even mm -hmm. though it's going to make money because I'm playing this money game just like everybody else. But this thing is going to reach way more people and it's going to give me way more money. So, And now they're making it where you can sell a product very easy. Right. Drop shipping and stuff like that. Exactly. So now exactly. it's easy to sell products. Well, I'm, I was well, talking well, about more so easier. of a, yeah, 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 yeah. But even to sell a service as a product. I think that's just even, you know, that's I mean, even we with your courses. That's what that's going to be. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's just opening up a new avenue to separate money from your actual service that you have to do. And how cool I is think it that we cool. have the opportunity to even to, to do that? I, I think it's cool, man. That's why I try to do every component that I have in my life. I just try to create a, a residual aspect of it online. It's, it's a smart thing to that's do. That's all I try to do, man. As a matter of fact, where can they find you, D? Man, well, shit. That was a great segue. That was a good segue. segue. <laughs> segue. <laughs> segue I like that. Fire. I like that. Oh, my mama. Speaking of speaking of drop shipping, what you mentioned, guys, I just came up on a year. Hey, let's go. Just came up a year of my pretty cool map store. It's done extremely well to my standard, considering I had to put no advertising dollars saying, on it. Wait till you do that. It's gonna get crazy. Man, it's been great. So Where'd I'm the money come in, bro. I'm so proud of my first year. Uh, October 27th made my first year with pretty cool maps, and my grandmother was my first customer. Shout out to Grams. Hey, yep. Shout out Grams. Second hey. customer was, was from Australia, and that's when I really knew I had something. Like, Wait a minute, it's all over the world. I was like, this ain't just family. Yeah, this right, is right. somebody, and I thought it was a mistake at first, actually. I thought somebody just bought some shit. I'm like, ah. Then they hit me up like, hey, my product. I'm like, oh, shit. Let me let me get it in the shape. <laughs> but just to see, just a Proof of concept. I, proof of concept. And that's what Pretty Cool Maps has been for me. Um, it's like the drop shipping. Drop shipping in general has really taught me a different way of looking at business, of looking at business completely. 
Because before, as you know, with brand building, we're trying to build our brands, put our branding on everything. We think that the logo yeah. is supposed to go on everything. But really, when you're just a storyteller and you realize that's what humans want, products already exist. Tell the story, find out what the products are, and sell to people who want those products yeah. already. They just need to be told in a certain way or for it to be housed in a certain place, neatly, cleanly, how they right. want to see Do it. Do it correctly. That's all. So for me, my biggest sale has been map dresses, map printed dresses. I even had somebody buy eight of them a couple of weeks ago, and I think it was probably for a Halloween theme or something like that. But this is this is the difference is I'm not I'm just giving with them. Excuse me. I'm giving them what they want. I'm not really trying to sell them on any of my things that I'm actually you know making. But I believe in the product because it's something that represents me. Right, right. It's travel. It's it's map. It's cartography. It's those things. And what that's allowed me to do, Chris, is for my social media, all I do now is just, I'm just myself. All I do is I go about my day, I show you what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and I link my pretty cool maps store. I link my pretty cool poses services. I link my, shout out to my pretty cool massage. I have another business too. Where I'm selling full on luxury massage chairs. Like legitly. Legit massage chairs. But, um... Just linking things back to my socials. Like, I'm living my daily life. I'll hop in my massage chair at home, and I'll say, damn, modeling was tiring today. I'm going to this, sit in this massage chair. By the way, hit this link right here, pretty cool mm. massage. You can get a massage chair of your own. And that's so all I'm like trying to do. You're no longer creating content. You're, you are the content. I am the content now. And it's very that's inspiring. Like a, that's a very beautiful way to make content. It's, it's really hard. to. That's why I didn't want to get out the comedy. Because you have to create the comedy, whereas I'm not just funny all day. Yeah. <laughs> Some days I'm not funny. It's hard to make short comedy clips all the time and that's make them. Yeah, it's a lot people of people do it, and you can, but it's, that's not too much stress for me. Right. And that's what I liked about the dropshipping situation. It just showed me how I want to market. I was like, I can get out there and like my brand this, my brand yeah. that. Or I could just sit back, collect products or see what products are already selling, create my store. And let you do what you were going to do anyway. Job shipping works, y'all. I know I've had, I, and I'm, I'm, he can tell you, <laughs> and I've watched it. A lot of people, is drop shipping the real thing? Is it fake? Is it phony? I've seen him get sales and get paid. Right. It's so, a real thing, I promise you. I'm telling you. you actually, might, there might be a service to teach people how to do it. And yeah, it's going to be. It's going to be. It's going to be, actually. But uh, one more thing, too. So the latest thing I'm going to get into is massage therapy. This is going to be my next profession that I'm going to add to my repertoire. Um, because I'm a model, I'm straining my body different times and trying to, you know, play with it, see what this human body does. So I need to learn how to unwind professionally and how the human body works. I really, I really want to get into that. So massage therapy is actually something I'm about to get into next month. I'm about to start school for that. Mm. And, um, and you've already been learning a lot on your own. Yeah, but I need to be licensed. It's, yeah, it's cool to learn sure. on your own, but I'm trying to get a license. For but sure. with that license, I have other opportunities. Look, I have an online massage chair store. You know, so I'm doing something physically as a massage therapist, but I'm also selling a product online that can be residual. Right. On top of that, I'm actually now thinking about small businesses, commercial businesses and stuff like that to where I can put massage chairs in those places. You know what like I mean? At the malls or people where there's a lot of drive traffic, people where people are waiting anywhere. Barbershop, mall, casino. Hell, my, my apartment complex right. here, Tom. No, seriously. No, I, so I have this thing, Tom, that I'm getting into. It's called vending machine, vending yeah, yeah. massage chairs. You already know. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with it, and I think that makes sense, man. Thank you. It makes a lot of sense. So that's what I'm going to get into next. I already got a B2B company that I'm familiar with that I can do the process with, 50-50 split. So it's just about location, location, location. But that's what I mean about doing something physically as a worker. I'm working my body, working humans' bodies and whatnot, other humans, but I'm also receiving a residual online proponent to that. Which is just, this is the 21st century, yeah, guys. Yeah, like, help do. yourself. You know it's what I mean? Um, there's only so much things you can do as an actual physical worker. It's going to be a strain. It's going to be, hopefully it's fulfilling for you. But if you can separate money from that and make that thing residual, that would be the goal that I want to set forth for people. And it seems like you'd probably master the thing better, too, if you, you would. about the money. Yeah. What about you, Tom? Where can they find you, brother? Shit, I'm going to keep it, you know, short and brief, baby, but Chicago Podcast stu uh, dot Studio. Yeah. You got three sets you want your podcast looking like this. It's this clean. Is the place to do it. It's As clean. A peppermint. <laughs> and <laughs> wait, 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 tell them there's a couple different options. That's too. what I said. We, we got a couple different sets, and uh, who knows? We might have a couple more coming soon. You never know. You never know. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a little credit for that. Too. <laughs> do your thing. Well, without Chris, none of this. No, <laughs> uh, Fellas. That's it? That's it, baby. Yeah, well, that's what I said. 
You can find them. You can find me at CaresNone.com. You can book me for a speaking engagement. You Do can it. follow me on all all platforms at Chris Cares None. Uh, all I do is I'm gonna hype you up, and if you and if you need, if you need to be hyped up, if you don't want to be hyped up, do your own thing. But if you want to be hyped up, that's what I'm good at, and I'm really good at it. So uh, as always, yeah, cares done. <laughs> I didn't do it this time, man. The whole Palestinian thing. I'm not trying to, Nick. <laughs>